a whiteboard notepad to add visuals to video. A few weeks ago I realized that it actually would make sense to add visuals to a video with the talking head format. Because previously I either had the talking head format or the drawing format, which both are fine, but the problem is combined they are, I guess, even better. This is the reason most schools around the world use this format. The question now is how can you translate this into video? There are, I think, two options. The first one is to go digital. If you don't, so there are two options if you don't want to cut down the entire rainforest in the process of making videos. So the first one is to go digital and you could get a tablet. You could also use your phone to draw something on, but your phone is not that big. So therefore it's probably not that good for this purpose. The super fancy option would be to get something like this, to get something like the Surface Book and to then have something you can draw on. But there are a few downsides to this. First of all, if you touch something on here, then it, it might not work. Of course, you can just hold it like this, for example, and then use a digital pen, which I actually also have here. And then you can just draw on here, which is also nice. But then you again have to store it and it is not easy to wipe. And then you have to tap on here and pick out the... The, the main problem I see is not that this doesn't work. It is just that I often have this as my main notebook. So the idea is to just have one main device and of course the Surface Book works fine for this and currently this is not my main notebook, it is just a rental I have since my main notebook is in repair. So therefore I do have a normal Spectra which I could use but the problem again is that this is my main computer and I often have notes up here which I then can access very easily which makes the videos more structured and also more detailed. So for this reason I got two different non-permanent markers. This is important because otherwise you cannot wipe it off. This is actually a whiteboard pen. I got it at TED I, which is a European uh, brand which sells a lot of random stuff and they are popping up everywhere basically and it's made by Lumocolor and by Stettler which is I think a German brand and it says Great Britain can be dry wiped from whiteboards not Great Britain but that's just English I guess and surfaces like glass and porcelain without leaving a trace it is dry safe so you could potentially use one of these one of these sponges to actually wipe it off. I do not have one of these, but what I do have is one of these kitchen sponges. And then I do have the other one, which is also basically the equivalent. And they actually were not that cheap. They were 250, two euros 50 for a pen. I mean, is it just inflation or is everybody just increasing the prices? Now for use on almost all surfaces can be wiped off using a damp cloth, a damp cloth. Superb color brilliancy and it dries in seconds. Now, this is one of my old kitchen sponges, which I still keep for cleaning other things, for the surfaces maybe. And well, this is the reason it looks so, it looks so dirty and rugged. So now let's try the first one. Uh, it would be nice if you could actually put the tip on here, which you apparently cannot. Oh, you can. That's nice, because then it also looks nice. So let's just say I want to make a video about how to add visuals to video. Of course, the first thing I need to understand is that if I want to add visuals to video, the main problem is that I now have to write in mirror if I hold it like this. Or I could potentially have it up here, but then it's like, and do you see this? And it's like, the main problem is the attention. So this is actually from a talk from I don't know if it was a Stanford prof or at Harvard or one of these institutions. And what they said about presentations is that the audience's attention usually goes to where your attention, the speaker's attention or the one who makes the video, for example, is. So the main problem with having something like a board, which you then write on, is that, of course, you now look at the board. But the most interesting thing in the whole talk should always be you. So therefore, this is kind of a, a problem that cannot really be solved other than you and the results being in the same place at the same time. Especially with PowerPoint presentation. If you have a PowerPoint presentation and you can also read it on here, why should you even look at me? Because I'm just reading is just kind of a reading is not linear. It is partially linear, but it is not entirely linear. So therefore you can skip paragraph, paragraphs, you can also skim read. So for this reason, uh, I already thought it would make sense. And now let's try this dry wiping. 
So, this is here, and it just works like magic. And it doesn't even it didn't even leave a trace, but of course I just can wash it and uh, after I had one of these video sessions. So what I think one of these formats could be is that I just have the camera a little bit more angled and then whenever I write something, I can write it. So let's say I wanna add visuals. So I now can add very quickly like I am used to. Of course, over time, maybe I could just learn to write in mirror and this, if it is learned, I mean, you already can write, so writing in mirror, of course, is more difficult, but uh, it is potentially something one can learn, I guess. So now, of course, I would also have to have the camera a little bit wider, which make sense, would, which would make sense. Another problem is that I usually, at least me, I record in portrait mode, so I kind of have a blurred background. The problem here is that the autofocus on, on these systems, on these camera systems, including the phone, are not that good are not on a level where they can actually realize, recognize that I'm pointing to this and then auto focus on this and then back to me and it doesn't really know. So if I ho am holding something like this, up until recently, the Samsung gallery, not the Samsung gallery, but the Samsung camera auto focus didn't even focus, for example, on my hand if I had it in portrait mode. Now, if I have the main video mode, which I'm using right now, which also crops in more, which is a downside if you record so close to the camera, but also an upside because, so the downside is, of course, you have less of the environment. The upside is you can move farther away, which then also means you have to position your mic somewhere else. Uh, because if you are far away from the mic or more far away from the mic, of course, the sound then is worse. So now what, what just happened is that I wanted to stop the video in order to think some, but I couldn't make it in time. So now, in terms of the workflow, uh, what I think, or the thing I wanted to mention is this. If you instead crop in, you don't have to be as close to the camera. And for this reason, your head looks smaller and also your proportions are way more normal because there is this effect if you are close to the camera that everything becomes warped, basically your nose becomes bigger and so on and so forth. And also your head becomes bigger depending on where you stand in relation to the camera. For example, if you have the camera up here, so if, my, if here is the camera, let's say, and I angle my phone, then of course my head is closer to the camera than the rest of my body, therefore my head looks bigger. Or if I angle myself, the same effect of course, obviously. So ideally you would have both in the same in the same line. So now, if you wanna add visuals to video, it would make sense if you had a format in which you would kind of see already what the person draw what the person draws. So for this reason, what I'm trying now is just get this a little bit back like this maybe, and then maybe also figure something out with you uh, where you can maybe still use portrait mode because portrait not mode just looks a little bit nicer. It just looks a little bit more cinematic. And now uh, the idea is that you already can kind of guess maybe what the person is writing. So therefore, if I now draw a graph, for example, which expresses on the one side the time and on the other side the use of something like this then ideally if you for example now learn the skill you learn the skill of uh, let's say writing in mirror so over time ideally the use of the skill goes up of course this now didn't really make sense so therefore I rewrite the whole thing and as you can see it actually goes away that's so nice So now, now for real, if you are actually learning something, this is actually now kind of a real explainer video, you know, an explainer video, then usually in the beginning, you make a lot of progress. So this is basically time, T, I, uh, um, your brain actually makes the most progress if it is the hardest, according at least to Andrew Huberman. Andrew Huberman. I do have problems with pronunciation. So therefore, over time, in the beginning, the rate of progress is usually pretty, pretty steep. But then over time, it usually slows down and basically becomes an asymptote to a certain 
total level, which is basically the, the cap where you cannot really exceed something anymore. Uh, this, for example, could be true for running, for cycling, but also making videos for the internet. But maybe not. Maybe there is just no cap. And of course, if you believe that there is this cap, then you just might, might think that there is no growth to be had anymore, and then you might stop. So, just a random side note, I guess. So now let's undo the whole thing. I actually kind of like this. The whole idea about this was I wanted to have something that is very, very hands-on, very, not tactical, but something that is actually it made in reality, basically, where there is no hardware lag, where there is no, oh, I tapped the wrong window, and so on and so forth, and also where I just don't have to store anything. The only thing now I have to do if I want to make one of these explainer videos, I have to take out this block, I have to have the sponge, which I can clean at any point in time, and I have to have these two pens. And now I can create visuals on visuals on visuals. So now, if I would start the video again, I would say that video alone and talking head alone are both fine, but video alone maybe is not the most, the best format. So talking head alone often means that you can, for example, copy the same thing to a podcast. So people can listen to you. That is very nice. And everybody is happy, as you can see here. Ideally also, I think it would make sense to kind of constrain the block because currently it is kind of flapping around. So therefore what you could also do is maybe get a rubber band which I have here in my magic desk setup so you get one of these rubber bands and then you can potentially put it around here but then you realize this is actually a little bit too tight so therefore you get a different rubber band and let's try this one also too tight but I actually don't really need this one on the side so hmm so I tried a few different ones, but I couldn't find anything that really made sense. So of course you could tape the whole thing or tape it only in the bottom, or you could only take a few of these papers and then put a cardboard in between of these and just leave the rest of the block on its own. So basically the only thing you actually really need is one cardboard that has a Dean A4 format, which is the usual format. And then you need just one sheet of paper, which acts as the whiteboard. So now, uh, on the one side, it is very nice that you now have this here. And as you are beginning to realize, pointing with the big pen is not ideal. And also writing with the big pen sometimes might not be ideal because you want to add details to the whole thing, even though the big pen aesthetic of just writing something on a whiteboard is something that at least really appeals to me because you have to write big. You cannot write down details. Therefore, you also don't really get lost in details. It's basically a creative constraint that prevents you from writing down like lists on here. I actually, a few years back, I kind of did a draw, my, not draw my life, but I just figured I just would write down very big on a whiteboard because I just like this whole style of people writing down things big. And, I don't know. And what I realized there is that this is just a very good constraint. You have to concentrate. You cannot, if I, for example, made a list down here of all the things that are maybe important in my life, for, exa for example, then I only have like a few points left. And that's basically it. I also have to draw this big because otherwise I cannot show you. And the same is true for a whiteboard. If somebody cannot read it anymore, then you cannot read it anymore. Uh, the same effect is true, I guess, to a certain extent for presentations on PowerPoint. But the problem is, the presentation on PowerPoint is usually edited on a notebook or a computer. So for this perp, not for this purpose, but for this reason, people can write smaller because they don't really see when it is actually too small. So what I also, I think, would make sense or what would make sense to add is to add a pointing device. So this pointing device could be another pen like this digitizer, which acts as a very nice pen, which you can then use to draw very detailed to something. And also my exposure is currently not fixed. So therefore let's fix it again. And now, now back to the format. Uh, first of all, this is you in a video. So therefore you have yourself in a video. And also, just realize if you put the camera down lower, you actually could see both. You could see me and the thing I'm writing actually, which is also additionally nice, but of course also again means you still have to write in mirror. So on the one side you have the normal video format, which is you talking head. Uh, the other side is you 
either creating visuals with drawing, which some people are more skilled at than others. There is no doubt about this. The reason I consider writing or drawing so much is the fact that it is one in one time. So if I record talking head, I record the video and I sometimes stop in between, but the recording time is one to one equivalent to the actual video output. This means I can produce basically an hour of a video in an hour if I don't stop in between, which in terms of video production is just insane. If you think about just how much time goes into video editing. If you haven't video edited in the past, it is basically a nightmare. The same is true for editing pictures. It is a nightmare in terms of needing the processing power and so on and so forth. Also, this is an additional constraint. If you, for example, only record lean video, which is the video format I call it, which is basically only trying to record in one on one time, maybe using notes, uh, writing notes before, but then recording the whole thing as kind of a presentation. A presentation you would also hold at university, at work, at school, similar to this. You also have one-to-one -one time. If the presentation is 15 minutes, then you have to stand there for 15 minutes. So now, and also my head looks again very big because of the different format here. But one-to-one -one time, I think, is a, very, is a very good secret, which also forces you, let's take again the presentation at work, for example, it forces you to deliver in these 15 minutes. You cannot fix it in post. Fixing it in post, I think, of course, is nice if you can do it. But the problem is, the problem is that you remove a constraint. And by removing this constraint, you're not allowing yourself to realize that the only way you could otherwise grow would be to be better in the presentation itself, in the video itself. So by constraining it to not editing a video. Therefore, the only way you can increase the quality of the video is by actually making better videos, recording better videos, not by making videos, which usually includes the process of creation and post-production, but by recording better videos as you are recording them. And this, of course, means the only way you can increase the quality is by increasing the information density or, in general, the quality the quality, but as a subset of the quality, also just how well you are able to put out something that is your thought, which is then maybe the speaking skill. So we have these two different formats, which is on the one side, the talking head format. On the other side, it is drawing, or it also could be just visuals. Think of a Vox video you probably saw already on the internet. So these are very nice visuals. So we have to distinguish between different kinds of visuals. On the one side, we have these Vox visuals, which usually are just very nice, but they also kind of fall into the drawing format. So this could mean that you write something, you underline something. Sim this is actually kind of following a similar method compared to someone writing on a key, not on a keyboard, but on a, on a whiteboard. And now if you combine these two formats, of course, we have the best of both. And the reason I combine, would want to combine these two formats is because then I would not have to combine these two formats in post. Of course, you can combine those, these two formats in post, but the problem is that you have to then have two recordings, basically. This is the one recording, this is the other recording, and then you combine them in post. So compared to before only creating one video file, which I'm doing right now, you then have already two video files and the final video file, which is three video files. If now the whole thing is recorded, let's say for one hour, this could mean it's maybe one gigabyte if it's full HD. Then you have two gigabytes, then you have three gigabytes. And one gigabyte for one hour is very, very conservative. So this means you just tripled the amount of space you need for storing this video file till the rest of eternity if you don't want to delete it. Or have a strategy where you actually upload it and then delete it and therefore don't have to store it on a hardware. The main thing, uh, not the main thing, but what if you could create videos that you could create without the need for a very good notebook, without the need for a very good camera, without the need for a very good microphone. And basically then you could create these videos everywhere in the world. Of course, you also kind of need good lighting, but you could also create videos just outside when it's daylight, for example. But what, what I'm trying to say is by using this as a constraint, you just might 
and I'm also just realizing what might also be beneficial is to have multiple pages because then you could also just flip over and you wouldn't have to basically erase in between. Of course, you could still erase in between, but what I'm trying to say is then you could switch between multiple different pages. Just like a presentation, you could switch between these multiple different slides. And what I'm also just realizing it is that it could also make sense to have a format like this instead of the other one. So by combining these two formats within the same file already when recording, you are saving yourself the editing time. And editing time is not for free because if you record a video, let's say this is me recording a video and this is the time block. Now, the proportion of how I spent this time on this video, this the overall time it takes me to make one video. If I have one-on-one -on -one time on making this video, then I have one-on-one -on -one time and the effects of the one-on-one -on -one time on improving my skill and so on. But now if I switch to introducing post-production into my workflow, what actually happens is that a certain amount of this time, let's just say 50%, which is reasonable, which is fairly reasonable. I would even say, at least in terms of me editing pictures, the actual part where I just took the pictures was maybe 20%. The rest of it is just preparation and post-production. So let's just assume we have a very nice 50% and I now couldn't, couldn't draw the 50% in reverse. So let's just make it the other way, 50, 50. It's half, basically. Now, what you just did is not only you didn't add time because you cannot, you can never add time. You only have a fixed amount of time. And for this reason, if you only have a fixed amount of time available, you are never adding time or removing time. But the only thing you do is you're switching the ratios in between the different activities. So whereas before you had one hour of recording, which equaled to one hour of video, you now have one hour of recording, which only equals in 30 minutes of video and then 30 minutes of post-production. And what this does to you is not only, of course it makes you better also in post-production, which also could be nice. But if you just want to create videos, I think the best idea is to just concentrate on the video. And what you effectively now just did is you took half of the time of learning. So you speaking half of the training time, half of the overall time, if you want to record videos for the rest of your life, you just, just half the time that you record videos, which also could be an aspect, for example, if you actually enjoy this part of creating the videos. What if you enjoy making the videos, but you don't enjoy editing the videos? Of course, you could outsource the editing, but what if you just didn't need to because you just focused on making the videos lean, basically. Lean video without editing. No editing video, you could also call it. So you just took half of your recording time and maybe you didn't want to. And this also means that let's just say these are two versions of yourself. The one version decides to edit the videos and add bling sounds, for example, that then make the dopamine systems of children go viral, you could say. And now the other person doesn't. The other person says, okay, what if I use my camera as a proxy or my, what if I say the human conversation is already quite something that's kind of good. I don't need to improve on this. If I just can better at human conversation and at human communication, then this might be the skill I actually also can apply to the rest of my life. So for this reason now, the one person decides to split the editing time into two and the other person doesn't. The other person just sticks with this approach and constrains himself. Of course, in the beginning, the other person, the person that splits the time will be able to make way better videos because they can out edit out the crap in between all the time. But this person here will not be able to make videos. So therefore, over time, the progress of person, person A will be very stagnant in the beginning and they will put out crap basically constantly. So in the beginning, the rate would be very slow. But then over time, as the effects of the straining accumulate and accumulate, let's just say you record one hour of video every single day, then the effects of video just accumulate and accumulate and maybe it's a linear graph, but maybe it also just goes up here. But of course, over time it cannot there has to be a certain threshold at some point in time. So maybe just assuming it linear or it maybe goes like this and then it goes like this again. The other person has the editing in the beginning, but the other person edits 
half of the time and speaks half of the time. So therefore, he thinks about improving differently. He thinks about improving the editing part, but he also thinks about improving this part. But only he can ever spend 50% of the time on these two parts. So therefore, the person B is improving the editing as well as the speaking. But by doing this, by splitting the focus, they are missing out on all of the potential benefits that would come from just being maybe one of the top 10% of speakers, of communicators. Let's just say you assume people have a certain communication level. So if we assume the communication level, just the skill to put out the thing that is in your head as human language and human interaction, human communication to others. And if you are just within the best 10%, which you probably can very easily get to if you just put in the hours, then putting in the hours here just makes it twice as likely or gives you twice as much training ground compared to here. So maybe you just don't want to edit videos, which is the whole thing I did. And it's not the reason my videos are so bad because I don't want to use this as an excuse. But what I'm realizing is that it helps me. It helps me tremendously. It also just helps me keeping up my language skills, even though I don't speak English from a day-to-day -day basis. We also still have the second pen after my entire rant about this whole thing. And we now want to try the second pen. The second pen is a normal, also standard non-permanent marker. And you can also put the cap on here. And you can use it to draw very <laughs> small things, which you could then maybe potentially see, but maybe potentially also not. But let's try how easy it is to wipe it off. It is harder to wipe off. So it is not a whiteboard pen, a whiteboard pen, but it is just a non-permanent pen. And for the reason of this pen, you writing and then not being able to to basically remove it with your palm, with the palm of your hand. For this reason, it is probably a little bit more sturdy because of this effect. Otherwise, otherwise you just would wipe it off all the time. So I would, would maybe not recommend this. I also thought about using this here in order to just clean it, but uh, maybe this sponge is just a way better way to just clean it. Now, what I additionally wanted to add is that this here, you speaking with a pen, is a format that worked for not thousands of years, but for the last couple of hundred years, this is basically what people used and therefore also thought that was the most efficient format to teach people stuff. It is the format that is still used in many universities, even though now there is kind of a switch happening and also more and more stuff is maybe switching to online, which could have a lot of other benefits. But when it comes to one human teaching another human something, even if it is something as complex as mathematics, where the additional visual information of graphs, for, for example, represented in 3D often actually would improve the efficiency of the learning process, still many people choose to just use a pen and a whiteboard. And this, I think, is a super cheap. So this cost me basically 250 for the pen. The block probably also cost a few euros. And this, this foil, this plastic foil here costed, I don't know. So for five euros, you basically get the replacement. The, so the digital alternative would be to get a second notebook, basically, to get a tablet, which is kind of also a notebook or a computer, you could say. And then, of course, you have the issue of synchronizing stuff. But no, you don't really have that issue if you just use this in order to draw. But of course, you then also have to charge your pen and so on and so forth. This is a solution that will always work until the pen dries out, basically. You don't have to charge it. It is always ready. And there is no latency. And there is basically no problem that can occur, which people haven't solved for hundreds of years with something like this. Of course, a whiteboard has not been around for this many years. But again, people using a pen, their voice and their gestures, the body language, in order to explain something with something as simple as a whiteboard or a super small version of a whiteboard is still a video format that might make sense.